run as the great battle that never happened, culminating the forgotten fall of 1863. People tend to think that the war went from Gettysburg right to the wilderness, but in fact, that fall of 1863 had a number of significant engagements and constant contact between the two armies. But because they never erupt in a full-scale battle the size of Gettysburg, people tend to forget about it. By the fall of 1863, Robert E. Lee's offensive capabilities had been significantly diminished by the battles at Chancellorsville and Gettysburg, and so he was unable to be as aggressive as he typically preferred. He did outmaneuver George Gordon Meade's Army of the Potomac, driving them back from the area around Culpeper toward Bristow Station. But Meade quickly recovered and drove Lee back toward the Rappahannock River, and then eventually to the Rapidan. At first, Meade thought that he would settle into winter quarters. But out west, his counterpart there, General Ulysses S. Grant, was having success at lifting the seas of Chattanooga. That meant Meade had additional pressure on him to do something significant here in the east. The result was the Mine Run Campaign. On the morning of November 27th, Meade decided to try to outflank Robert E. Lee and then be able to exploit things as opportunities presented themselves. It was an ill-starred campaign to begin with. A significant problem Meade had was his B list of generals in Corps Command. Worst among these as the weak link was 3rd Corps Commander William Blinky French. French led one of the entire wings of the army and got lost, bogged down in an area near what's today called Payne's Farm. Instead of taking the road that he was assigned, French decided to explore the position and in doing so bumped into an entire Confederate division under Edward Allegheny Johnson. Johnson aggressively reacted and brought the 3rd Corps to heel across the property of Payne's Farm. The fighting at Payne's Farm was intense, but ultimately it turned out to be a huge strategic win for the Confederates, which delayed a third of the Union Army preventing consolidation at an area near Robinson's Tavern. But Confederates were able to pull back into a strong fortified position on the west side of Mine Run, creating earthworks that to this day remain among some of the most impressive seen on any Civil War battlefield. Governor K. Warren, the man who saved the army at Gettysburg, suggested a flanking maneuver that would put him in the Confederate rear. Robert E. Lee, rather than pulling back, responded to this new threat by extending his line. And the next morning, when Governor K. Warren looked at that Confederate position, he saw earthworks that daunted him so much that he decided to call off the attack. When word got back to Meade, Meade said, That man has half my army at his disposal. He has ruined me. But when he himself looked at the position, he agreed with Warren's assessment. And instead of needlessly throwing his men against that Confederate position into what would become certain needless slaughter, Meade chose to preserve his army by pulling back. His men loved him for it and forever after declared Meade to be a great captain. Politicians in Washington were less excited, but because... Meade was the victor of Gettysburg, they couldn't just outright sack him. After all, he didn't do anything wrong. So instead, they're going to promote Ulysses S. Grant to come to the East in the spring of 1864, and Meade will have a new boss who will travel with him in the field. Mine Run changes the dynamics of the war in significant ways as a result.